In the last video, we threw our 125cc turbo go-kart onto the dyno and tuned it using its fully tunable ECU with fuel injection. And, well, it was successful until it wasn't. If you haven't seen that video, go back and watch it. And in fact, if you haven't seen the whole build series, go back and watch all of the videos. But I'm sure we all have the exact same question on our minds. What exactly happened to this motor? So right now, we're gonna get to work tearing this thing down, pulling the motor out, and pulling the motor apart. First up, I removed our beautiful TIG welded intercooler piping, followed by the exhaust, which is held on by a single V-band clamp. I removed the turbo oil lines at the same time. Then it's a simple process of undoing a few bolts to remove our baby turbo and the turbo manifold. Of course having our SP Tools electric ratchet on hand made this job super easy. But the turbo manifold instantly I see improvements that we can make because we actually had leaks on this side of the turbo manifold so that's where it bolts up to the motor and that having leaks means that we're not getting all of the exhaust gas to the turbo and spinning the turbo up so even sealing that up is going to increase our turbo spooling immediately which is going to be really nice so I'll refabricate that. I also want to clean it up anyway because the rest of our piping looks so good and this is probably the one part that lets it down a little bit. But now it's time to take everything else off so we can remove this motor and see what actually happened. She's naked, fully stripped down, and we're ready to pull this motor out of the chassis. The motor bolts to the chassis using five bolts, one up top and four underneath. Once those are all undone, we can finally pull the motor out of the chassis. So it's finally time to pull apart our 125cc motor and this is the part that I'm most excited for. To be fair, I don't actually know a lot about these motors, so this is a really good opportunity for us to learn as we go. First up, we're gonna take off the intake manifold and this is something we might actually end up modifying in the future. So it's just two 10 millimeter bolts for that bad boy and it should come right off. So one big thing about these is the intake manifold is just really skinny and it seems like it's quite restrictive. I port matched it a little bit, but there's definitely a lot left on the table with these in terms of how much air we can get going into these motors, especially on the intake here, like going through the throttle body, it's really, really skinny compared to how big the throttle body is. So there's definitely a lot of room for us to gain some performance there, as a lot of you guys have said in the comments. So next up, we will remove our sandwich plate which also exposes the cam chain gear on the other side of the motor. The best thing about work <laughs> the best thing about working on small motors like this is just so easy to do everything as opposed to working on cars, which makes these really satisfying to work on. It's so much less effort that the instant gratification is very real with these things. I'm trying to think in my mind like what I think has happened potentially to this motor. But generally speaking, when something goes wrong in a car that makes big grinding noises like this, it would be pretty much a piston or a rod that's bent or snapped. Or it would have run like a bottom end bearing, for example, on the crank. But these motors are so foreign to me that I really have no idea exactly what this could have done. Luckily, we're about to find out. All right, so we're just removing the sandwich plate now, which seems to be pretty stubborn. Bit of a flathead. <laughs> All right, we've got that off. I guess next steps are, maybe I'll remove the spark plug and then we can start figuring out how to get the head off. Ooh, I can see the valve, but it does look pretty sideways in there, which is very interesting. <laughs> All right, so out comes the spark plug. Let's see what that looks like. Oh, wow. Okay, so that does give us a little bit of an indication. The spark plug is looking <laughs> wow, a little worse for wear. So now I'm really interested to see when we pull the head off exactly what it looks like in there because that is crazy. Oh, and I'm losing all the oil out of the head because 
I should have drained the oil before we got to work. <laughs> All right, so next up we are gonna remove the cam gear chain so that we can undo the head and get that off. Not quite sure how to do that, but there's a couple of bolts on the gear, so let's start with taking those off and kind of see where we land. Couple of eight millimeter bolts. Nope, they are 10 millimeter bolts. Wait, what? Yep, so they are nine millimeter bolts, which is so weird. Luckily, I've got it in my SP tools box over here. All right, nine millimeter, let's give that a crack. <laughs> yep. Hey, all right. There we go, cam gear is off. I assume that's the way you're supposed to do it. So now we should be able to undo and remove the head. Four bolts on the front. One, two, three, four. All right, we should be able to, oh, no, there's one more. All right, I forgot about this wee guy right here, so. All right, now we should be able to take the head off. Oh, look at that. Oh, came right off. Just like that. Wow. And I think we have found our issue. <laughs> wow. So it looks like we have dropped a valve on the head. So if you can see that right here, that's not supposed to be there. That's actually the valve stem right here, and that's the head of the valve here. That's literally come off the stem completely. So I think the valve just completely failed. And then after that happened, obviously it smashed around in the head as the piston was going up and down. But the damage is freaking crazy. So that's the stem right there. That's bent fully like to the right. That is absolutely mental. I've never seen anything like that before. So yeah, it looks like the valve just literally snapped, which is crazy. Not sure what would make that happen. If you know, chime in the comments below for sure. We'll continue to pull the rest of the head off as well and have a look at the piston, but definitely a catastrophic failure, but I don't think it was anything to do with us running too lean or anything like that. Or maybe it was, maybe there was too much heat build up in the head, potentially from us doing all the two-stepping as well. I think now to pull off the head, we just literally undo this other 10 millimeter bolt right here. And then we should be able to just slip the head off. Looks like it needs a little bit of convincing. There we go. The piston, I think, is a little bit stuck. Give it a wee push. There we go. That is so cool. Man, this is so interesting. So the engine is fully disassembled behind me and we have some positives to take away from the situation. So obviously the head itself is absolutely cactus, but that's fine because I was already planning on doing a big bore kit install on this motor anyway, and that replaces the head itself. I've also seen a couple of comments from you guys saying that we need to throw a cam and everything into this as well. So I've got a bit of Googling to do tonight for sure. The piston itself is pretty smashed on the top from where it was hitting the valve and all the pieces inside the cylinder as it was going up and down. But the really good thing is the piston rings are in perfect condition. Absolutely no cracks or anything like that at all. So it was definitely holding up nicely to the boost before the valve gave way. So that's really cool because obviously a lot of people in the comments had their doubts about how the motor would hold up. Clearly the valve wasn't up to the task, but the piston itself was, and that gives me a lot of confidence moving forward. So what's next? Well, we obviously have to rebuild this engine. I've seen a couple of comments about how we should throw a couple of head gaskets in it to lower the compression for boost as well. Absolute genius, I love that. But whenever you have to do anything like this, there's no point just putting the engine as it was back in. So we're obviously gonna go much bigger and much more badass. We're gonna try and get this turbo spooling at least up to seven pounds of boost. The more boost it has, the louder the dose will be on the turbo as well, which is always an added bonus. And since we have the motor and everything out of the chassis, it's the perfect time for us to finish off all the welds on the chassis, paint it, make it look beautiful, and modify the steering a little bit so we get much more lock. Because ultimately, we did build this thing so we could take it drifting. And I do have a couple of ideas for other videos about the top speed test and everything as well for this. But that is the end of this video. I've gotta go jump on eBay 
today, purchased a bunch of things for this motor so that next week hopefully we can dig straight in to our massive upgrades we're going to be doing on this thing. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this kind of different style of video as we tore down the motor. I hope you're having a fantastic weekend and an awesome Sunday and I'll see you in the next video. You poos! Bye. She's naked, she's broken, but we are going to come back bigger, better, stronger and more powerful. Bye.